Let me offer some prayers. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shanyavari Pashtatya Deshatarine Hi Krishna dear devotees and welcome to our Vespa Namahata. We're so happy that you can attend this evening's program and I'm so um, fortunate and grateful to introduce a friend, a sister, a mentor to so many of us. Her grace, Surabi Kunj Devidasi. <laughs> Die. <laughs> um, Surabi Kunj Devidasi is a disciple of his holiness. He, she's a very dedicated disciple of his holiness, Kadamba Khanna Maharaj. She loves book distribution and she's a very enthusiastic, uh, inspiring devotee. And um, by profession, she's a software developer. And today's topic um, is called the nectar of book distribution. And we're so excited to hear from her yeah. today. So thank you so much for attending. Please accept my respectful obeisances. And we look forward to joining you the grace of Rabbi Kunj Hare Krishna. Check if my audio is okay now. Yeah, it's it's actually good now. Yeah. Oh, is it okay? Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> Great. So I'm gonna do kirtan to begin. Jaya Radha Madhava, Jaya Kunja Bihari, Jaya Radha. Namaste 
जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत कथाधर श्री वासरी गौर भक्त बिंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे थैंक यू सो मच to the west namahata for inviting me to speak i'm very excited um to speak about book distribution and i just want to say at the beginning please feel free at any moment to type messages in the chat or um you know raise your hand write comments questions and um just any reflections you have um and yeah raise your hand even unmute at any point to speak because i like interaction um yeah so we can begin now so um first before we begin i just want to know who on this call you can raise your hand who has experience book distribution here talia Okay, cool. Tarika, Tirumala, Paramatma Prabhu, Ujwala Mataji. I know Priya Kishori has. Um, so that's exciting. Okay. Okay, cool. So most of us have had some experience of book distribution, and maybe some of us haven't. Okay, that's exciting. Um, so first, we're going to speak about. why book distribution is important uh well i don't know if anybody wants to comment first on why they think book distribution is important you can like unmute or write in the chat everybody is shy <laughs> um well so book distribution is so important to shila prabhupad that's i mean i think that's the main reason in iskon why we consider it so important it's one of our most vital um ways of devotional service and we know why it's important to shila prabhupad it's not just to spread his movement it's not just an activity to him it's because he has deep compassion to save everyone to save the fallen condition souls um it, it's not just a mechanical activity to him and um it's very much in line with what krishna says in the bhagavad gita in chapter 18 text 68 and 69 and right at the end after krishna has already explained the whole process of krishna consciousness and how to start it and why it's important and all the different um the, the yoga ladder all the different types of uh, the yoga processes to get to pure devotional service he says at the end for one who explains the supreme secret to the devotees pure devotional service is guaranteed and at the end he will come back to me there is no servant in this world will be one more dear so that already is i would say a great incentive to distribute books because krishna is saying himself that anybody who tries to share this message that he has given arjuna in bhagavad gita and that shri prabhupad has delineated in all his books they will become more dear to well they will become the most dear to krishna there won't be anybody more dear than them to krishna so it's a very great way to please krishna and in our krishna consciousness movement shri prabhupad gives us so many ways in which we can please krishna and um avaisheshika prabhu uh, who actually i take great inspiration from basically everything i'm going to say today is from his book called our family business i don't know if uh, anyone's read this book but if you haven't then please read it it's just so ecstatic um this book is not just it's called the great art of distributing shri prabhupad's books but it's not just about book distribution it's actually just full of nectar and it really really inspires me in krishna consciousness just in um, in other ways not just to distribute books but even just to read the books because it's full of nectar from all different 
books from the ghost swamis and from the Srimad Bhagavatam and other books of Srila Prabhupada and Srila Prabhupada's letters and letters from Srila Prabhupada's disciples. Not only about book distribution, but just about practical application of devotional principles. So Vaisheshika Prabhu summarizes what our movement is about. He says there's two purposes to this Krishna consciousness movement. Chant Hare Krishna and teach others. That's all we're doing here. So chanting Hare Krishna means our own personal practice. Teaching it to others is the second, is the second step. And in the seven purposes of ISKCON, we know that the, um, the, one of the purposes is to propagate spiritual education, basically knowledge about Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and then there's all the other purposes. The seventh purpose is with a view towards achieving the aforementioned purposes to publish and distribute periodicals, magazines, books, and other writings. That means to accomplish all the other purposes of ISKCON, we need this. This is the seventh purpose. So um, why is book distribution so important? Because the words in Srila Prabhupada's books are pure transcendental sound about Krishna. None of the words in these books are mundane or ordinary sound, like everything else. In this material world, we are faced with mundane sound at every moment. Um, but the words in Srila Prabhupada's books are as powerful as the Maha Mantra. They have the ability to be pure, and um, so are all the words in the books of Srila Prabhupada's disciples also, like our family business. Um, in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 20, Verse 25, uh, it is said, My dear Lord, you are glorified by the selected verses uttered by great personalities. Such glorification of your lotus feet is just like saffron particles. When the transcendental vibration from the mouths of great devotees carries the aroma of the saffron dust of your lotus feet, the forgetful living entity gradually remembers his eternal relationship with you. Devotees thus gradually come to the right conclusion about My dear Lord, I therefore do not need any other benediction but the opportunity to hear from the mouth of your pure devotee. So this, is, this summarizes exactly why these books are so important because these, the books are these glorified, are these glorified verses. These books that Srila Prabhupada has given us are these selected verses uttered by great personalities. Srila Prabhupada is uttering these great verses and glorifications of Krishna. And they are reminding the forgetful living entity about Krishna. They're reminding the living entity about their relationship with Krishna. And therefore the living entity can come to the right conclusion about the value of life. So will basically lib liberate the whole world. They will reconnect everybody to Krishna. And that's, that's the main reason why we need to distribute them. Also, Srila Prabhupada contains all of his instructions that he wants all his disciples and anybody following him to, to follow. All of these instructions are contained within his books. So his books have that potency. And um, they also carry the instruction of his spiritual master because distributing his books is what Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur really, really wanted. So anybody engaged in that activity also gets the mercy of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Um, in this book, Our Family Business, Vaisheshika Prabhu writes that book distribution is literary kirtan. So we know in this movement, we have um, the chanting of the holy names, which is our prime process of um, basically deliverance, our prime process of getting out of this material world. It is given by Lord Chaitanya, the chanting of the holy names. So book distribution is the literary kirtan. Um, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 11, it is said, Sukadev Goswami uh, glorifies the process of Sankirtan by saying, O King, constant chanting of the holy name of the Lord after the ways of the great authorities is the doubtless and fearless way of success for all. 
including those who are free from all material desires, those who are desirous of material enjoyment, and also those who are self-satisfied by dint of transcendental knowledge. So this process of chanting the holy name, Sankirtan, is so powerful. We know from the Shikshastakam, it clears the mirror of the mind. It um, saves us from the burning fire of, um, of material miseries. It, it can bring about that bliss that we are always hankering for, that ever increasing bliss. Now, this book distribution, because it is that same glorification on paper, it has the potency to do the same thing. Um, so, and Vaisheshika Prabhu explains that our Sampradaya is the Sampradaya of the book. Uh, sampradaya means the complete gift. It's a gift that's been given. And this is actually our family business. Our Sampradaya's business is to distribute books. Um, he says that in, in this book, our family business, he explains that Krishna's family business was sharing this knowledge. He first did it, he first poured this knowledge into the ear of Brahma. And then Brahma shared this knowledge with uh, Narad Muni. Narad Muni shared it with Vyasadev. Vyasadev wrote all the Vedic literature. So everything has been passed down from Krishna. And we know in our, in our parampara, um, everybody has been passing down books from Lord Chaitanya. He personally, um, he actually found books and personally brought them. He found the Brahma Samhita and Krishna Karnamrita and brought them to his followers. Srila Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami also wrote books, tons and tons of books that we all um, read now. And all of that has been passed down through our parampara. So without these books, we wouldn't have anything. Um, and we're actually very fortunate to have this in the printed medium because Back in the day, they had to hand copy everything. Um, in, in our family business, Vaisheshika Prabhu is explaining how um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he relished personally distributing Sri Brahma Samhita and Krishna Karnamrita to his confidential associates. Um, and he says that, Srila Prabhupada explained, in the olden days, there were no presses and all the important scriptures were handwritten and kept in large temples. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu found the Brahma Samhita and Krishna Karnamrita in handwritten texts and knowing them to be very authoritative, he took them with him to present to his devotees. Of course, he obtained the permission of the temple commander. Karnamrita available in print for the world to relish. So, here we are very fortunate in this day and age. We don't need to hand copy. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's described how when Lord Chaitanya brought these books, everybody started hand copying them. And I was thinking, oh, we are so fortunate. We have the printing press and we have thousands and thousands of books and we can just request what books we want and we'll get them immediately. They had to go through so much labor. So Srila Prabhupada wanted us to use this advantage that we have with technology is to use it to actually distribute the books, um, but also reading it ourselves. So um, book distribution, it keeps us alive in our Krishna consciousness. It, it's the oxygen. Vaisheshika Prabhu describes that this is the heartbeat of the movement. It's our oxygen. We, we, we inhale it, you know, it's giving us energy. Um, without it, we can become very dry. Uh, it, and it forces us to, because it forces us to keep going deeper and taking our practice more seriously. If we don't have the pressure of distributing books, we can just, we don't even, there's no pressure for us to even practice it. But when we're distributing books, we have to be filling ourselves up with the knowledge, filling ourselves up, going deeper into our sadhana. And um, there's this beautiful analogy, which Vaisheshika Prabhu gives. Um, so he describes Yamuna's cookbook and says that in the cookbook, it's described that dal is very nutritious. And but when you bring those two together, they become 42% more nutritious when they are combined. And Vaisheshika Prabhu com um, compares that to the process of hearing and chanting our own personal practice 
and distributing books. So he said that when you do one, it's great. When you do the other, it's great. But when you do both of them together, it is way more nutritious to you because it nourishes our spiritual lives and it creates so much auspiciousness for others. But um, specifically hearing and chanting on its own, it's you're doing it and that's great. You're nourishing yourself, but not sharing it. And if you're sharing without hearing and chanting, then it's going to be a bit hollow. So we must combine these two activities for our spiritual health. Um, and another thing that Sri Prabhupada said was that he said that everyone is sitting in their homes waiting for Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda to save him. In this book, um, Our Family Business, Vaisheshika Prabhu writes that before Srila Prabhupada came to America, he was writing a lot. And one of the things he wrote was, just as the Lord delivered Jaga and Madai out of his own causeless mercy, you explain to everyone that the same method of preaching work has to go on. The world has now filled up with many Jagais and Madais to deliver. Everyone is anxiously looking down the road waiting for Chaitanya and Nitai to come to their rescue. So I thought that was very, very powerful because sometimes we feel like when we're distributing books, is anyone, does anyone even want it? You know, does anyone even want us, want to speak to us or want us there approaching them? But actually Prabhupada says that everybody is waiting to be saved, even if they don't know it. Um, and Srila Prabhupada saw it as a way to save, to solve all the problems of this world. And we can see that in our own practical lives. I don't know about any of you, but for me, I feel very disheartened when I look at the state of the world and the way people behave and how, how much sinful activity is going on simply because people don't know that it's sinful or they don't know that they, they don't have a better way of life. They may know it's sinful, but may not have the strength to overcome it. So this book distribution is going to give them that strength. It's going to give them that higher knowledge and the process to develop that strength. And that's why it can actually solve the problems of this world if we all take it seriously. Srila Prabhupada saw it as an attack on Maya. And um, it is, book distribution is attacking Maya. Um, Prabhupada used to use military language. He used to sign his letters from Camp London, Camp Paris, Camp San Francisco. And he felt like the temples were bases from which we go out and fight Maya and drop these transcendental bombs. Um, by Shishika Prabhu writes, weapons of mass instruction. So, um, and one of Srila Prabhupada's disciples, Kusakrata Prabhu, wrote a very apt verse. He said, Seeing the fierce army of illusions put forth by the forces of Kali Yuga, Srila Prabhupada has released an unlimited shower of powerful arrows in the form of his books. So this is his weapon. Srila Prabhupada's weapon is these books to attack ignorance and attack sinful activity and everything that Maya is bringing that's keeping us away from Krishna. Another beautiful analogy that Vaisheshika Prabhu mentioned in one of, in his seminar, I think when he came to South Africa in 2016, is that when you distribute a book, you're actually worshiping Krishna in the heart of that living entity. So when you meet someone, you should see them, see Krishna in their heart, sitting on an altar and actually distributing the book to them is, is worshiping that Krishna in their heart. And um, it's also, it's also our sublime duty. Vaisheshika Prabhu describes it as heavy lifting. I don't know, I don't know about anybody here, but for me, I don't like doing physical labor. I don't like lifting heavy objects. Um, and in the material world, why would we want to? At work, I sometimes carry PCs and you know, heavy, heavy computers and things, and it's I don't like it. But to carry Srila Prabhupada's books around, that's a purifying service. That's heavy lifting that we actually want to do because when we carry those books around, our mind and senses actually become purified um, because even just the act of carrying them around, the physical act of it without even distributing the books is very beneficial to ourselves. 
And um, there's this. Agbetam 10 to 37. The word kriyashu, meaning by manual labor or by work, is important in this verse. One should engage in practical service to the Lord. In our Krishna consciousness movement, all our activities are concentrated upon distributing Krishna literature. This is very important. One may approach any person and induce him to read Krishna literature so that in the future he also may become a devotee. Such activities are recommended in this verse. Kriyashu yas charanaravindayo. Such activities will always remind the devotees of the Lord's lotus feet. By fully concentrating on distributing books for Krishna, one is fully absorbed in Krishna. This is samadhi. And the, the stress is that Srila Prabhupada focused on the word manual labor because it's not, very, it's not an attractive thing. But in Krishna consciousness, it's very attractive. And he also explains that we meant to be carrying firewood for our guru. In the Vedic scriptures, it is known, in, at least in previous ages, the disciple is meant to carry firewood for, for the guru. So Vaisheshika Prabhu writes this beautiful passage, which I'll just read from this book because I don't want to, I don't want to leave anything out. Scripture clearly supports the idea that employing one's physical senses in practical service to Krishna and the spiritual master is foundational to one's spiritual advancement. The Mundaka Upanishad, for example, says that a disciple must carry firewood in his hand, samit pani, for his guru to use in sacrifice. Why firewood? In past ages, a spiritual master would daily prepare and light a sacrificial fire as the means of worshiping God, and his disciples would assist him by collecting wood for that fire. Such a manual task performed to serve the guru not only fostered humility, opening the disciples' heart and mind to the guru's teachings, but also invoked the spiritual master's blessings. So this act of carrying the firewood is making us humble and, and making us able to receive instruction. Just as the firewood Krishna submissively carried for his spiritual master came from trees, the paper from which transcendental books are made today also comes from trees. Just as firewood is carried by hand, so too are transcendental literatures. Um, and Vaisheshika Prabhu writes that he's, he's watched people carry heavy boxes of Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita up and down staircases, going door to door, preparing, transporting, displaying them at events and fairs and book tables and spend hours. Uh, hours of the day trying to sell them. So he says that clearly those who work in these ways to distribute Srila Prabhupada's books fulfill the wood carrying spirit recommended in the Mundaka Upanishad. So this is this is nice because it connects us back to the previous ages in a way. This is our this age, Kali Yuga's way of fulfilling that wood uh, wood carrying purpose. Of sacrifice. And Vaisheshika um, Prabhu had this beautiful analogy also about how in previous ages they used to um, test the mantras, the potency of the mantra, by in animal sacrifices by bringing the animal back to life. And that's how you'd know the mantra works. So he said that in this age, our mantras, what we're doing when we go out on book distribution is we are testing our mantras. We are seeing if our mantras work because if they do, when we go out, we will be bringing, he, he called them dead people back to life because material activity is a dead state of being. It's not, it's not living. It's a very sad state of being. It's, it's your, your spiritual senses are almost dead. So we're going to revive these senses. So he, and he said that we're bringing them from animal consciousness to Vaishnava. So that's how we can test if our mantras are actually working by going out and distributing books. Um, and that was a fantastic analogy. And another benefit is that book distribution helps to overcome the mind. So we all, in our practice, we know how important it is to overcome our minds. Our minds are our worst enemy sometimes when they're not engaged in Krishna's service. And the way as it is, 
that our minds will differentiate who should receive a book and who shouldn't. Our minds will look just at someone's outer covering the external and will think, oh, this person is likely to take a book, that person's not likely, maybe based on their skin or based on, you know, whether we think they're Hindu or whatever, we just make these assumptions. And the, the way book distribution silences the mind is it tells us, it, it proves to us that we can't listen to it because we have, and when we approach everyone, we may be startled. We may find that someone who we thought was unlikely to take it will take it. And someone who we thought would definitely take it was not interested at all. So in that way, this process is defeating the mind and it's teaching us to not listen to it, but to see everyone with equal vision, actually, which is the goal of Krishna consciousness. We want to see everybody as spirit souls, not as people in these bodies. So book distribution takes us to that level of vision. And it also takes us out of selfishness. Um, I'm not sure if anybody else experiences in lockdown, but just being isolated and not being able to go out on the street, I felt myself focusing more on myself and all of my miseries. And, and that was not pleasant. And I, I, think, I think a lot of people felt in Each or go out and do all the services that we normally do we just start focusing on our, our material life and how miserable it is and it's like consuming but book distribution because the whole focus is getting the book out there you know it's, the focus is on another person it completely takes you out of your own selfishness and that's that's actually what I've, I've definitely noticed that and I can see in lockdown how it's how it's impacted um, and in this, in this regard, Prahlad Maharaj was speaking to Lord Nishingadev. Oh, best of the great personalities, I am not at all afraid of material existence. For wherever I stay, I am fully absorbed in thoughts of your glories and activities. My concern is only for the fools and rascals who are making elaborate plans for material happiness and maintaining their families, societies, and countries. I am simply concerned with love for them. My dear Lord Nishingadev, I see that there are many saintly persons indeed, but they are interested only in their own deliverance. Not caring for the big cities and towns, they go to the Himalayas or the forest to meditate with vows of silence, Monavrat. They are not interested in delivering others. As for me, however, I do not wish to be liberated alone, leaving aside all these poor fools and rascals. I know that without Krishna consciousness, without taking shelter of your lotus feet, one cannot be happy. Therefore, I wish to bring them back to shelter at your lotus feet. So this is Prahlad Maharaj being the height of selflessness because he does not want, he doesn't care for his own deliverance. He only cares to be an instrument of compassion to others and to distribution does. It takes us out of our own uh, focus on ourselves and makes us want to serve others. So, okay, I think my battery is a bit low. Um, can you just? Hare Krishna, welcome everybody. Oh. Okay. Are you back? Sorry, I just, you. My you. charger wasn't plugged in this whole time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, so, thank you. So I'm back. Um, okay, so does anyone here, after all of this that I've said, why don't we still, like even knowing this, why don't we want to go out on books? Does anyone have like, a suggestion for why we don't be like any reasons you can type in the chat or just unmute and say something oh 
Ah, so, uh, Sri Lakshmi Nishinga says, fear that we won't be successful in our attempts. Yes, that's actually the answer I was looking for. Um, it's true. It's true. We do feel this fear, you know, and, and Vaisheshika Prabhu has such a nice recommendation for that because he says, we don't have to think we're going out to distribute books. We must just see our goal is to just touch the pavement. So that means we're, we're only here. All we're trying to do is to touch the pavement as in as soon as you get out of the house that you've already succeeded, you've accomplished your goal. Then whatever books you distribute or don't distribute, it's just, it's an extra, you know, it's a nice to have. But the main goal is to just get out of the house because he's saying that that's actually the hardest thing to leave the house. When you go on the street, you know, you may, someone else may be distributing, you may just tag along with them, you may just carry their books, you somehow be part of it. But really just leaving the house is the greatest, um, it's, it's the biggest goal right now. And um, I know for me, like I do definitely feel that pressure, like, oh, I have to distribute books and I get disheartened. I actually, I actually do get disheartened if I'm out for a long time, especially, and no books are distributed. And um, there was one day when I was disheartened after, after spending the whole day, like 10 hours or something, out at a mall with a book table. It was beautifully arranged book table at Watercrest Mall. And hardly anybody even started. I think maybe the whole day I distributed two books and that was a friend coming to the book table because I told them to come, but it, it was, there was nobody. And, one of my, and when I told a friend that I was disheartened, she said that actually just looking at the books on that beautiful setup that we had, it felt like an altar, it felt like I was really setting up an altar when I went to that mall or the book table and arranged all the beautiful books in such a nice um, pattern. And she said, when, when the people walk past and look at this altar, they're actually getting a Gyata Sukriti. So right now, initially they may not have that um, Sukriti in their bank balance yet enough Sukriti to be able to purchase a book or to be interested in a book but by looking at it day after day because I was meant to be there for the whole month day after day they would eventually develop they would attain that Sukriti and then maybe be able to purchase the book at another time and I thought that was so apt that every time we go out even if we don't distribute any books we're actually creating that future opportunity for the person. Um, and Vaisheshika Prabhu says that's why another goal is to just leave everyone with a good impression. That's the goal. It's not about getting the book distributed today at all costs. Because sometimes that cost may, you know, ruin relationships, cause fights or something. So he says, just leave everyone with a good impression. If they say no today, then at another time they'll say yes, because of the good impression we've created of devotees. And because they would have gained that Sukriti. And also, rejection is really hard on book distribution. I know I, I used to get very like emotionally sad when I'm rejected. But Shishika Prabhu says, we must just turn, we have a switch at the back of our head, just turn it off where we don't care about getting rejected because it's not personal. It's not a personal rejection to us. Um, and then we can just carry on without being like emotionally affected by it. And he also says that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said that rejection on book distribution gives us spiritual blood for our spiritual body. So when we get, when we meet antagonistic people, or people are not interested, people are fighting with us, or just, you know, we get harassed or whatever difficulty we experience on book distribution, that is giving us chit rakta, which is spiritual blood for our chit sharira, which is our spiritual body. And that, and, and the reason is my own realization about it is the reason that works is because it takes, it makes us humble. It's a way of dissolving the false ego. When we out on books and we faced with all these things, we can't have our pride and misconceptions that we do about ourselves that make us think we're better than everybody else because people are just minimizing us. So our false ego is being destroyed, it's being dissolved. We approach them as humble beggars, like, like Lord Nichinanda and Haridas Thakur, like Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu was saying yesterday. They were approaching people with a straw between their teeth, begging people to worship Krishna. That is Lord Nichinanda, who is Lord Balaram. He is the Supreme Personality, but he was begging. 
So when we are out on books, we are actually humble beggars, just begging people to take this knowledge um, because we want, we're begging them to just turn to Krishna. So that's what, that, that, mood of, that mood helps us develop humility. And that's what's going to help us in our spiritual lives. And Vaisheshika Prabhu says that when we, well, he's quoting Narutam Das Thakur, but when we dive into this Sankirtan movement, into Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, we come out on the shore of the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Um, in his book, Srila Prabhupada explains, if one knows the secret and says, let me dive deep into the ocean of the transcendental loving movement introduced by Lord Chaitanya, he immediately becomes one of the confidential devotees of Radha and Krishna. And even um, Rameshwar Prabhu did have this notion that when we distribute books, it's actually in the mood of the gopis. It is a very, when we're distributing these books, it's the same kind of service that the gopis are doing because the gopis are always trying to unite Radha and Krishna and Srimati Radha is always bringing people to Krishna. So when we are going out and distributing books, we actually are performing that same service in this age where we are bringing people to Lord Chaitanya's movement in that same mode of the gopis. So when Rameshwar Prabhu said this, everyone thought this must be some kind of deviation. It just sounds like he's just making it up. So they actually wrote to Srila Prabhupada. And um, Nandulal Devidasi wrote, I have heard Rameshwar Prabhu in Los Angeles say that when we are performing Sankirtan, we are engaged in the Leela of Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya is the union of Radha and Krishna. And he explained that just as Radha Rani is even more anxious to arrange for the other gopis to meet with Krishna, then she is for herself to meet Krishna. And that the other gopis are also always trying to think of ways in which to arrange meetings. Way that we can um, some tips to distribute books but before that I just want to ask if there's any questions before discussing the four laws of book distribution very quickly um, any questions okay cool so now that we know why it's important to distribute books um, Vaisheshika Prabhu explains that there's, um, he explains some four key principles to distributing books, which uh, he calls the four laws of book distribution. So the first one is your sadhana must be strong. Now, he explains that strong sadhana helps us to develop all good qualities, which are very attractive to other people. When people see us having good qualities like compassion, forgiveness, tolerance, truthfulness, patience, forbearance, all kinds of transcendental qualities that nobody else in the world appears to have, then they're very attracted. They want to know, what are you? What are you doing? Because you're so great. You're so nice. So that's why having strong sadhana, uh, Vaisheshika Prabhu said that if you just have strong sadhana, you just go outside and you don't even need to talk to anyone. People will come up to you and ask you for books. So and he said, strong sadhana means strict, serious, and sincere. Um, and, and when we have those good qualities, people want to also develop those good qualities. They see it, they're attracted, and they say, I want, I want whatever you're having. And um, Vaisheshika Prabhu writes, just as a diamond's beauty is crafted by pressure and heat brought to bear over time, the devotees' beautiful characteristics are formed by the intensity of their long-standing personal practice of devotional service. So he says strong sadhana means forging ahead on difficult days too, when the mind is getting the better, 
of us. And Srila Prabhupada recommends that we sing the Sat Goswami Asaka every day because it'll help us imbibe the mood of the Goswamis and give us empowerment. In this song, there's a description of the pure and exemplary practice of devotional service by the six Goswamis. And that made them popular with both the gentle and the ruffians, which is our goal. We actually want everyone, whether they're gentle or ruffians, to be attracted to Krishna consciousness. And strong sadhana also helps us to deal with the turbulence and unfavorable circumstances that occur while we are out on the streets interacting with the material energy. It's a scary world out there and strong sadhana is our protection. We need to nourish in order to flourish. We can't pour from an empty cup. St strong sadhana fills ourselves up with so much spiritual energy and taste that we can distribute the overflow because that's what book distribution is. It's actually distributing the overflow. Serious chanting and reading will bring us happiness. And when we're happy, we naturally want to share that happiness with others. And Vaisheshika Prabhu describes that strong sadhana is panchanga bhakti, the five limbs of devotional service, association with devotees, chanting attentively, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, residing in a holy place and worshipping the deity, all in a humble mood. The second law of book distribution is quite an obvious one, get books. So he says, um, success is when preparation meets opportunity. You can't distribute books you don't have. Um, that's obvious. So always keep books on us to be prepared because when we are prepared, opportunities will just present themselves. It, we miss so many opportunities because we simply didn't think to carry books. I know personally, I've been in that situation where somebody asks, do you have this book? And I don't have it on me. And it's, it's really painful. It's the greatest pain because I don't know when I'll meet this person again. And at that moment in time, they're actually eager to receive the book. So we must always be prepared. Um, so always have books in our car, handbag, whatever it is, just, just to never miss an opportunity. When we carry books with us, Lord Chaitanya arranges for us to meet people who want them. The third law is the more you show, the more you sell. So this also seems obvious. Um, Vaisheshika Prabhu likes to say, sell them in bunches like bananas. Um, he says, the more options people are presented with, the more likely they are to find something they really like. So it's good to have a really nice display. And um, a nice way is to start with the bigger, uh, present a whole set of books first. And if they can't uh, afford the whole set, then you can go to individual books or show them the the bigger books first, like Bhagavad Gita and Krishna book. Um, and Vaisheshika Prabhu also says, innovative displays, book tables, smart boxes, leaving them on your desk at work. I've actually tried that and that worked really well um, because people just walking by, they get that Sukriti and then after a while they come and ask about it. And um, he even said one lady made a backpack for her dog with books in it. And people would come and pet the dog and get books. So there's so many innovative ways in which we can spread Krishna consciousness. Um, the fourth law of book distribution is you must organize. So this, this is something we often forget because a lot of the time we're like caught up in like the spontaneity of it. And, you know, it's, it just gets the better of us. I know I've seen that happen so many times where we're just on the street and we just like taking books and just like they're just flying out of our hands. But um, organization is extremely important because when we organize, it shows that we care enough about something to plan and make arrangements for it, to make it, you make sure it works well. Um, so Vaisheshika Prabhu recounts how organization has helped communities dramatically increase their book distribution. It's very important. So uh, part of organization is to set goals and measure the results. So it's easy to measure the results of book distribution because you can just count the books and you count how many books there were before and how many after, and then you know what your success was. And he also says that like every minute you spend organizing saves you five to 10 minutes in execution. And he gave the example of a boy trying to cut a tree with a dull ax and he says he has no time to sharpen it. Organization sharpens the acts of our endeavor so we can be more effective book distributors. 
So organization means arranging transport, arranging our prasadam. I mean, if you just go somewhere and you don't have any plan, like you just wake up one morning, go out and say, I'm going to distribute books, but you don't have books or you didn't arrange books, you didn't arrange transport, you didn't arrange anything. It's just, you're just going to end up wasting time. So organization is key. And um, organization will lead to brainstorming ways to increase our book distribution and prioritize. And then you can really brainstorm like other ways, other avenues to distribute books. Um, and yeah, basically planning. So the way we can plan, well, at least something I do is I keep a spreadsheet at least of all the books that I have, how many I've sold and just increase just to keep tabs on it. But there's so many ways we can just, you know, use, um, we can use spreadsheets and we can use technology to make us more efficient with book distribution. Also, we can use technology to just make our communication better because communicating between teams, that, that can really be, uh, we can really use technology for that to make, just to make everything easier. So that is all I wanted to say about book distribution. But um, the last point is that book distribution is not the only service. You know, there's, there's a lot of emphasis on book distribution and it is such a glorious service, but there are people who just don't want to do book distribution and it's totally fine. Um, when we used to have the monthly Sun Kirtan festivals, it was so ecstatic because every single person's purpose was book distribution. So even if they didn't physically go out on books, they, whether it was the pujari, they were worshiping the deities, so someone else could go out on books or the cooks who didn't go out on books, but who cooked for all the book distributors. So everyone can contribute to book distribution in purpose in that like holistic way. And there's also so many other ways to preach now, to share Krishna consciousness, um, social media, there's posts, there's videos. I see a lot of creative videos, there's reels and writing and pictures and art and drama and so much that's going on on social media. So if people are not distributing books, it's not a bad thing because there's so many different ways in which we can share Krishna consciousness. My spiritual master actually says there's innumerable ways to share Krishna consciousness and we are just touching the surface of it. So the, the, the point is to keep the, the focus on sharing Krishna consciousness, to not get caught up in ourselves, but to always be focusing on how are we serving Srila Prabhupada's mission of sharing Krishna consciousness far and wide, whether it's through books or through other innovative ways to share. Um, to just keep that in the center. So, Hare Krishna. I don't know if there's questions or comments from anybody. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Hi, Krishna Suravi. That was so amazing. Thank you so, so much for um, being a, a wonderful guest at our Respo Namahata program. This class was just ecstatic it really was the nectar of book distribution and it was so amazing you actually you are a weapon of mass instruction and it was, it was so amazing to hear, to hear all these um wonderful analogies and um quotes from His Grace Vaisheshika Prabhu, Srila Prabhupada, and so many of our acharyas. It was just, it was really pure nectar, and we're so grateful to have you, and we really, really pray and hope that you can um, be our guest again, and we're so grateful. I just want to acknowledge, um, we're so grateful to have had um, His Grace um, Ram Vijay Prabhu join us, but I see that he's dropped off our co-temple president for, at Shishi Radha Radhana Temple, and we're also grateful to have Her Grace Mother Ranga also join us, but I think she has also dropped off. I think there's load shedding and those kinds of things happening at the moment. Yeah, and thank you each and every one of you for joining today. Um, we'd like now like to open the floor for any questions or any comments that you may have or any realizations that you'd like to share. 
please unmute. Um, please feel comfortable to unmute and leave any messages in the chat box if you don't want to unmute. Yeah, and I think we have a com we have a few comments here. We have um, Ujvala Rasa Dasi saying thank you very much, dear Surabi Kunj, Hare Krishna. From Tirumala Devi Dasi, we have what an enlivening, informative class. Thank you, Surabi. Um, again, from Ujvala Rasa Dasi, we have um, touching the pavement reminded me of the Damodar Leela endeavor and mercy sure and Sri Lakshmi that was amazing <laughs> I love realization yeah and Sri Lakshmi Narasimha Devi Dasi says amazing class so we're getting so much love and appreciation for you and we're so so grateful yeah so if anyone has any questions please please feel comfortable to unmute or send a message in the Thank chat you so much for all those lovely comments and uh, the realization by Ujvala Rasa Mataji. I really love that because it's like your endeavor is touching the pavement and then Krishna sends his mercy in the form of, you know, anything, all these experiences we have on Sankirtan. Oh, we, we have, we have um, Sri Lakshmi Narasimha Devi Dasi saying, thank you for your beautiful class, Surabi. We're so lucky to have your association. Whenever you speak, you're so personal. That's so true. And you so obviously are reading and studying Srila Prabhupada's books and relishing Krishna consciousness. You are amazing. And I really liked the four laws of book distribution and the strong sadhana, strict, serious, and sincere. Well, yeah, that was amazing, me too. <laughs> Everything is in this book here, actually. This is all by Sheshika Prabhu's mercy. This book, Our Family Business, is my greatest inspiration in Krishna consciousness because not only did it make me want to distribute books, but it just really, really made me, this was the only reason I read Srimad Bhagavatam because this book was full of so much nectar. So, and I, before that, before reading this book, I never used to read at all, like ever. <laughs> um, so I, I said recently, like my whole life, I just read Harry Potter, you know, before Krishna consciousness. And then even coming to Krishna consciousness, I read Bhagavad Gita only before this book. And it was so difficult to read. I never liked reading and I was such a slow reader. But when I read this book, I just couldn't put it down. And then I, I couldn't put the Srimad Bhagavatam down because it's just so filled with jewels of wisdom. So I recommend everybody reads this book here, Our Family Business. It is just amazing, amazing nectar. How, how can we get a copy? Oh, I think this book, this book probably is at the temple. I remember I got this five years ago when Vaishya Shikha Prabhu came to South Africa and he did, he, he signed it actually. He was signing people's copies. But I know that we definitely ordered a bunch of this, this book. Like we have to have it. So yeah. But if anybody needs, please ask me. I will find out how to get it. <laughs> yeah, please, please feel free also to, if you're shy to ask any questions now, please feel free to reach out to Her Grace Sarabi Kunj Devi Dasi and um, ask her any questions that you might have or if there's any books that you would like, please contact her as well. Um, yeah, but if there's no more questions uh, or no more comments or realizations, we just want to thank everyone, especially our guest speaker, today for the most amazing um, class and thank you everyone for the amazing association and we really look forward to having you again and just let us offer some prayers from Shakalpa to Rubyascha, Kripa Sindhu, Vedicha, Atita Nam, Bhavanabhyo, Vaishnavabhyo, Namo Namaha. Thank you so much.